Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Final Trade. It's that time again for one of my favorite videos to update every six months. Yes, it is long-term Pokemon booster box performance. And I'll keep doing this every six months until we no longer have to hear all the nonsense about how everyone's putting boxes back in the closet. The easy money has been made, manufactured scarcity, nine billion cards, all those things that are, well, wrong. So the way this works is I've taken all of the boxes from Black and White Era, XY Era, Sun and Moon Era, and Sword and Shield Era. So the past four eras, an era in Pokemon covers about three years. So this goes back in total a little over 12, 13 years or so. And I've assumed you had to buy your boxes at the astronomically high price of $100 per box, which is a very, very, very conservative measure. Because in reality, if you were buying these boxes back in 2011, 2012, in those eras, you would have been paying $70, $75, $80 per box, not $100 per box. Even today, most of the time, you don't have to pay $100 per box. I looked back on my actual purchase records of Pokemon over the last three years, and I very rarely paid over $100 a box for Pokemon booster boxes. Second, I assume that you had to buy on the worst day, release day when the price is going to be highest release day is the worst day during the print life of a product to buy it because the excitement is the highest and the demand is the highest and so the market responds with the highest prices. If you simply wait six, 12, 18 months in the case of Pokemon and you let the TCG expansion life cycle do its thing, the prices will come down. But I've made these bad assumptions in order to make this analysis even more conservative. And then I've said, when you go to sell these boxes, you have to pay 12.5% fees, which is pretty reasonable. Now, I did not factor in a shipping cost because you might potentially sell boxes in person with no shipping costs. You might force your buyer to pay the shipping costs. You might ship them around the world, in which case you have all kinds of insurance and protections, and it might cost you three, $400 to do the shipping. You might ship it literally to the other side of your city for seven, eight, ten, twelve dollars So I don't try to quantify shipping costs in here, but I've made the rest of the assumptions so conservative that it really doesn't matter. And so what do we get when we take the compound annual growth rate under these assumptions? Now, compound annual growth rate, the CAGR, is the level non-volatile compounding growth rate of an asset. So it says that from the inception of an investment until today, what is the level line compound annual growth rate that brings you to today's price? And so it's a very useful number in financial analysis because it strips out a lot of other noise and it just tells you basically what is best with a single number. And so what we can see from the black and white era in 2011, 2012, and 2013, if you had held these boxes to today, these are their current prices on TCG Player. Now, I need to elaborate on these a little bit. They're a little complicated when you go all the way back to the black and white era because uh, the availability of the boxes starts to drop off. The ones highlighted yellow, as you see over here, there is no market data, meaning that there is at least one box for sale on TCG Player, but there have not been any sales in recent history, and people will sometimes complain when I do this analysis every six months and they'll say well if there's been no sales then you just can't use those numbers and if you would like to discount them you may but the reality is there are boxes for sale at these prices they're reasonably in line with the couple that we have that have market data and so I'll use them you can choose not to if you like now for these reddish ones you can see none for sale it means there was no market data so there have been no recent sales and there were none for sale. So yellow ones, no market data, but at least one for sale. So we can get an ask price. Red ones, nothing even for sale. That's why for the red ones, I can't even calculate a CAGR because I have nothing to go on. Not even the highlighted yellow ask price with no market data. So for black and white era, we do get three results that we have good market data for. And you see the compound annual growth rates for these three, 30.4%. 34.3%, 33.7%. Now, let's put this in perspective to the stock market. In the stock market, if you invest in S&P 500 index ETFs, which is about the most basic, dumb, and good performing thing you can invest in, it's what most people should invest most of their money in. Over time, 
over the long period, your returns, your compound annual growth rate will be somewhere around 8 to 10 to 12 percent, depending on how you calculate reinvestment of dividends and other things. And so to come over to these boxes of Pokemon cards and see compound annual growth rates in the 30 percent range is nothing short of amazing. Now, what I've done over here is I've just said, what's the average of all the boxes in this era? And I've just taken a simple arithmetic mean, which is not really correct for when you're doing compound annual growth rates. There's a different, more involved formula you would use to be exactly correct, but it's kind of good enough just to make the point that over all of these boxes we can derive data for out of this era, the average compound annual growth rate is 33%. And then here in the final column, what I've done is I've just shown the best, the second best, the worst, and the second worst. And the reason for that is to just kind of uh, kind of pick out the outliers. If there's an outlier that's way ahead of the pack, too far ahead of the pack, and we expect that over the next, say, five to ten years, its performance will kind of be reined in in line with the rest, we can discount it today and say, well, what's the second best today? And the same with the worst one, because sometimes you have extenuating circumstances that prevent a box from really achieving what it might have otherwise in the short term. In the long term, you might expect it to move up in compound annual growth rate performance with the rest of the investments. And so that's why I list those here, just to kind of check, you know, what if we cut the top and bottom best performers off? What do our second best and second worst look like? And so we'll move on to the XY era, 2014 to 2016, and we see much the same thing, the compound annual growth rates. Well, the very worst one, it looks like 15.9%, which if you were a hedge fund manager on Wall Street and you were returning 15.9% consistently for the last eight years, people would be taking big notice of you. They would think you were pretty great. Now, if you were returning in the 20s and in the 30% over the last 12, 15 years, you would be exalted as the god of hedge fund management of all of time because the best hedge fund managers in all of Wall Street history cannot touch these kind of returns. And that's why I emphasize these. That's why I keep doing these six-month updates on these Pokemon Booster Box performances because it's so ridiculous. And yet people will sit and drone on about things like manufactured scarcity and, and uh, there's no opportunity left and everybody's doing it and there's too many boxes and it can't go on and it was never meant to be this way and there's no money in collectibles and all of this nonsense, and yet the data show a different story. So for the XY era on a whole, the average was 26.5%, with the second best at 35.9%. You know, I maybe have one investment in my life that's returned better than that, but maybe not even. 19.2% on the second worst. Still beats the stock market, every one of them. Moving on, Sun and Moon era, 2017 to 2019. Again, same broken record, 34.5%. You know, I've been doing these updates on these Pokemon Booster Box long-term performance for a year and a half now. And, you know, over the whole time, what I hear is, oh, well, you know, it'll pull back. It'll retrace. It'll stop. It was a short-term thing. It was just 2020. It was just Logan Paul. It was just this. It's just that. And all of those arguments have been wrong. Every single one of them has been wrong. Every single one of them will continue to be wrong. Here are the data. Second best, 57.1%. You know, if you want to cut that out even, say, hey, let's take two outliers away from this one. Well, your third best is 44.7% compound annual growth rate. Unbelievable. And hey, the worst one here is worse than the stock market, 9.9%. And this is why I always make jokes about how the greatest hedge fund managers in Wall Street history get beat by people collecting boxes full of cardboard squares with pictures of fighting animals on them. Here are the data. And of course, now we have to move on to Sword and Shield, which of course people say Sword and Shield is special. Sword and Shield, it was printed to oblivion. Nine billion cards. Everybody putting boxes back in their closet because Rudy told them to do it. Too many boxes, they'll never appreciate in price because the boxes in the closet will satisfy demand forever. It can't go on, on and on and on. And yet, what are the data? Average, 25.6%.
compound annual growth rate. And of course, here with evolving skies at 95.5% CAGR, yes, we should cut that one out. I I hope at some point that moderates a little bit, comes back down to earth. Now, the box price is not going to go down. The box price will continue to go up, but it will go up at a slower pace in the future, I believe. I do not think this can sustain nearly doubling every year, not for long, at least. The worst one, 2.4%, of course, that's battle styles. And I've highlighted these three in green, and I've noted over there on the left side, Pokemon Center. The reason for that is these three boxes are still available at MSRP on Pokemon Center. And the one thing that we always see consistently is that the market prices of the boxes do not begin to rise in earnest until they go out of stock on Pokemon Center because Pokemon Center is basically the MSRP substitution for the rest of the market. It puts an artificial ceiling temporarily on the market price of these boxes. And so I would discount these three that are in green. I would not pay much attention to their performance thus far. They need time to go out of stock on Pokemon Center and then maybe have, say, uh, two or three, four or five months in the open market without that constant supply from Pokemon themselves. But even then, 25.6%. And these are the sets during COVID, during lockdowns, during money printing, during print to oblivion, during 9 billion cards, during manufactured scarcity, during everyone's putting them back in their closet, during all the excuses why this time is different, it's all changed, there's no money to be made, the easy money has been made, during all the excuses of why you shouldn't put Pokemon back boxes back in your closet, and they were all wrong. Every single one of them was wrong. Here are the data. I'll keep doing this every six months, like I said, this is one of my most fun videos to make. And so the total average for all four of those Pokemon eras, for all these standard Pokemon boxes going back to about 2011, the overall average 29.6%. And you have to understand this is a compounding. So if you simply beat the stock market, let's say the stock market was getting 12% and you get 30%. So you're outdoing the start stock market by two and a half times. That does not mean that at the end of 10 years, you have two and a half times as much money as you would if you had put it in the stock market. You have way more because it compounds. It compounds two and a half times per year. So the advantage over the stock market is just unbelievable. And yet people will sit there and they'll say, manufactured scarcity and all the rest of the nonsense and that there's no opportunity. The market was never meant to be this way. All those tired old things that have always been wrong and will continue to be wrong. And now I made a little chart down here and I just charted what the compound annual growth rate as of today for all of these was compared to their release date. Just to show nothing has fundamentally changed. Nothing has changed in the market. This was not a uh, fluke of any particular era of Pokemon. This is not some weird thing that is different. There's no reason to think going forward, this is going to be any different. In the boxes from the last five years, we see a little more volatility, but like I've said, I think a lot of that will rein in and moderate over time because things like Evolving Skies cannot go up at 95% price increase per year forever. They'll rein in to around that 28, 29, 30% average that we see over everything. And they'll continue to do that while people continue to miss out, while people continue to try to be cute and contrarian and talk about manufactured scarcity. And don't worry, I have a whole video about manufactured scarcity coming. You better believe it. So I'll put this on the calendar on the Kanban board. I'll update it again in six more months, and we'll see in six more months. Pokemon will have still been notching 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, in some case 45% compound annual growth rate, depending on the box. You don't have to be smart. You just have to be patient. You have to be disciplined enough to take boxes full of cardboard squares with pictures of fighting animals on them and put them in your closet and sit on them for a decade, maybe more, and you will beat the most legendary hedge fund managers in all of Wall Street history. Let me know what you think, guys. Thanks to everyone who makes this content possible, especially my very generous supporters on Patreon. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade.